Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And this is our college football playoff predictions after week number nine. Whew, good gracious. The season is, what, at this point, two-thirds of the way done? Just insane. Just insane. No reason why it should be like this. Uh, this is, <laughs> College football needs to be year-round, man. Not not recruiting and all that. Just give me give me games every weekend forever. Uh, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us, including all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, if you're on Facebook, hit that like button, share the show out, leave some comments, etc. But you can find more information on us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our podcasts, our videos, our social media platforms, everything else is over there. Uh, we have a, a weekly power rating that we put up. Uh, we do all sorts of different stuff. So go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Chris, let's go ahead and get into it. I went first on the top 10. So let's go ahead and let you go first on uh, on our college football playoff picks. So you're, right. you're doing four, right? Right, yeah. I so I, I always I, I add in five and six just I don't know why. I, I don't get to play, but okay. I, I mean you you yeah, you're right. So anyway, I, I think right now the way I see now we're projecting, right? This is not yes. where they stand today. This not where they where stand today. They're going to finish. Where they will finish. I think we're gonna finish with LSU one, Ohio right. State two, Clemson three, and Penn State four. You think that they will put two Big Ten teams in and not two SEC teams in? Well, I think if the way it, the way I'm projecting the season, I think Florida makes it to the championship, but if LSU is going to get in, they're going to have to go and feed. That means Florida is going to have two losses, albeit to LSU. I think Auburn can absolutely beat Alabama. I don't think that that will be a complete fluke. So, no, no other SEC teams get in because everybody's got two losses. Okay. Right. Now you go to the Pac-12. I think uh, Oregon has still got to go to USC, and they still have to go to Arizona State. Utah still has to go to uh, – they've got two other road games that are going to be tough. I just had it pulled up a minute they play, ago. Uh, at Wisconsin uh, – not at, uh, at Washington. No. At Washington. That was the one I was worried about. And then at Arizona. Um so they, you know, in the Pac-12 is, is just crazy. And then one of those teams has got to beat the other. So if if they finish with two losses, which I could foresee happening, that ain't happening. And then I think Penn State is going to finish with one loss. I think we're going to get a one-loss Penn State team. They're going to lose it in the big house. And not the big house. God damn. I'm sorry about the GD there. Uh, <laughs> the horseshoe. At the horseshoe. I'm going to do that every time. And it, I swear I take a lot of shots at Ohio State. I like taking a shot. I, that's not a shot. That's an idiot. So whenever you think <laughs> you being an asshole or a moron, usually assume moron. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's going to be a, that's not going to be, that's going to be the best loss anybody's going to have on a resume. Would I love, would I love for my Baylor Bears to go undefeated, get in this thing? Absolutely. I, I just don't know that I see that. College football is really hard. They're going to have to beat one of these teams twice. Um, and they're not going to kill anybody, okay? The way and the style they play, they're going to be close in all these games. They're getting blown out by nobody. Trust me on that. Yeah. But I don't know if they're killing anybody. Um, what would I want to see? I'd want to see Baylor go undefeated. But uh, I, I think a couple of years back, Penn State got left out when I think they deserve to get in. And I think that will have something to do with it. We also always talk about how this is a TV show, and they bring a massive, massive audience with them. I think that's going to have a lot to do with it. And then also, I think they're going to have a resume to deserve it. they got to win over Michigan. They, 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 they're they going to have good wins throughout their resume. And then they're going to have one loss to Ohio State if it plays out the way I think it will. Yeah, okay. Okay, I could see that. And that gives you a great round where LSU-Penn State, I think, will be an incredible football game. Penn State's defense right now looks awesome. It's that LSU offense. Can Penn State have the big plays against LSU's defense? How many points can they put up? 
and then Ohio State, Clemson, Clemson will finally get the test that they deserve. And, and if they win, great. If they don't, tough luck. And if we get a Big Ten playoff final, like we got an SEC final, I don't think the world's going to end. It don't. It don't. And if LSU plays Clemson or Ohio State, I think it will be one of the highest rated national championship votes. If LSU plays Ohio State, it will be massive simply because for the first time in four years, we don't get new blood. We get both teams new blood, and both of them have had a juggernaut of a season just smoking folks. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with so you. So that, that, is, that is the world in which I'm living in if we're projecting right now. I'm trying to predict the future. I'm not really good at predicting the present. So we'll let's see how uh, it works out. Let, let's see. It, it, my, mine is similar, very similar. Uh, okay. My number six team is Baylor. I think Oklahoma gets them in the regular season. I think Baylor beats them in the Big 12 championship game, which it sounds crazy, right? Because, you know, in the regular season, Baylor's got them at home. Like, it's... You know, I, that that would make more sense. But I do think Baylor can make adjustments and whatnot, I think, in a big oh, time. Matt Rule playing a team twice. You don't want to be that team. Exactly. That's that's what I'm thinking there. So I, I think Baylor at six because I think they finish with one loss. Penn State, I think, at five, they will have one loss. I Penn State, I think the only loss on their schedule is at Columbus. So my top four at the end of the season, I think number one – I will have Ohio State. I it, And this could be completely different, and, and I think they might do this based on matchups, which I know they're not supposed to. You're supposed to see different, da 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 right? Number one, I've got Ohio State. I think a win over Penn State, uh, a win over Wisconsin, a win in the uh, against, I guess, maybe Wisconsin again, uh, a win over Michigan, who I think is going to finish the season pretty strong. Like, all of these wins will stack up. They haven't played Iowa yet, right? They uh they don't play uh, Ohio State doesn't play Iowa this year. Wisconsin does oh, hasn't played Iowa. Oh, yet. they have not yet, and they could lose that game. That, so that Iowa game could end up in the that game could determine the West. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. Like Iowa's still a really good football team. Well, they've only got one loss. They is that no, right? they don't have any conference losses? No, oh, Penn State. Yeah, they, got, yeah, well, yeah they, no, loss. they lost to Penn State and they lost to Michigan. They got two. Oh, losses. that's right. They, but okay, but neither of those. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. conference oh. conference losses, but Wisconsin's already got two conference losses. So we, we'll see. We'll see. But either way, so at Baylor at six, Penn State at five. I've got Ohio State number one. I've got number two LSU. I think LSU ends the season undefeated. At, yes, they could end up number one, but for my matchup situation, I think that this works out for everybody. I've got Clemson getting in at three. I don't think anybody challenges them for the rest of the season. Oh. They're going to get in easy, and they're not going to be seated high. That's going to be their penance for finishing for, with a bad resume. I think Alabama loses against LSU at home, and I think the committee looks at it as Tua was not healthy. And I think that they wonder, okay, how good would this team be with a healthy Tua, which gives them an edge over Penn State and Baylor. I think Alabama at number four. So your matchups would be Ohio State-Alabama, lsu Clemson. Think about the ratings for those two games. That would be astronomical numbers. Like, LSU-Clemson is a heavyweight fight. That's a heavyweight fight. And Ohio State-Alabama is a heavyweight fight. Now, I, I do think Ohio State would win that game. Uh, LSU-Clemson, I think I think LSU would probably win that game. I was about to say, I, I would love to play Clemson. I would almost rather play Clemson than Penn State. Oh, yeah. I really would. I think Penn State's a better football team than them. So, so in that prediction, now what what would the matchups be in your situation again? Uh, you had LSU uh, one, the Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, Penn State, and I, I think that LSU, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama would be better ratings. Now it, it may not be super significant. I don't, I mean, Penn State's just as big as Ohio oh, yeah. State, or Alabama, it, with, with national fan base, and and I think you got the Bama fatigue. You won't have any of that with Penn State, um, and then Big Ten markets are pretty massive. Yeah, and. Uh, and they love college football. Um, so, yeah, but we both have the Pac-12 being left out and the Big 12 being left out. I, I just – I don't see Oregon – And we would both leave the ACC out if Clemson, if Clemson wasn't in it, yeah. was any name other than Clemson. It, I, I don't see Utah – If Florida State went undefeated in the ACC, we'd be like, yeah, not good enough. You got to win over Clemson <laughs> and you yeah. get a bunch of high school team goes to that. I, uh, I, I would say that – it, I, I like the Pac-12. I love Utah, and, and I love what Oregon's doing, but I don't see either one of those teams winning out 
the rest I of the I don't either. The Pac-12 is insane. If you think somebody's going to roll through the Pac-12, you haven't been watching Pac-12 football. Yeah. It might happen. Both of these teams might do that and end up clashing in, with only one loss in the championship game. But that goes against everything I know about the Pac-12, which is we don't know anything. Yeah. That's a, Utah could could probably lose to Washington. Yeah. Uh, Oregon can end up losing to just about like it, it, would it surprise me if you see uh, USC finds a way to beat Oregon this week? No. no Oregon but, has but had a really tough had, slate. If Utah loses to loses to Washington at Washington, but then plays Oregon in the in Pac-12 the national, title in, in the in the Pac-12 championship and wins that, you still end up with a two loss team, two loss team here. And you, and you know, I just think chaos is going to happen in the Pac-12 because that's what that conference is. There's a reason it's Pac-12 after dark. Yeah. Just weird stuff happens, man. Yeah, you got that right. If I was a Pac-12 team and I had a big game, I would love, love, love for that Pac-12 network to put me on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> like, don't make don't, me play in the dark. Don't give me that 9 o'clock slot. Please, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. Well, next week, you got uh, Oregon USC at 7 o'clock on Fox, on Big Fox. So, we'll see. That's, that's not quite Pac-12 after dark. It's got to be the late, late game for it to be back 12 after dark. Now, you're right. I mean, it, it'll still end after dark. but Well, it'll be after dark when it starts. But Yeah. No, 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 because that, that'll be like 5 o'clock their time. So it, But it'll it'll get to dark by halftime, and that's still a whole half of football to play. So, you know, crazy crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. I don't like that you're picking my Tigers over your, 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 your time. I don't like that. I see what you're doing. I don't like it. And, man, look, it, I, you, you and I have talked about this. I try and stay as unbiased as possible in this. I don't yeah, think I think I think this is a little reverse jinx here. Okay. I don't think that Alabama is as good as LSU has been so far this season. I, it, I do agree with that. And if you've got a a hurt quarterback, uh, I don't want excuses. I don't want excuses. No, no, no. I, hey, look, even if Tua was fully healthy, I think it would still be a fifty fifty game. But if it's a fifty fifty game, and then you've got a a quarterback that's not one hundred percent, you know, walking around on a bum ankle. Like and then that kind of shifts things in LSU's favor, and it's not well, like these two teams. Let's talk about your scenario, my scenario. Here's the reason why I think the committee is going to do more what I think than what you think in that situation, because we obviously both see everything working out the exact same. The reason being is, is you have a big boy team with a big boy resume, and their one loss is on the road to one of these playoff teams, and Alabama will have lost at home. To one of these playoff teams and and that is the difference if you're going to say what is the better loss the better loss has got to be on the road at the horseshoe horseshoe <laughs> which is amply named because many many years they lived with a horseshoe just firmly supplanted up their ass not this year they're beating the crap out of everybody yes but yes um so i, I, I do see where you're coming from I, I will think say, if you've got to say which of these teams are we putting in because we're all in agreements. We're putting one of these teams in as a four team. Which is the better loss? I think, A, one team lost to an absolute juggernaut. While LSU's looking good, they're not beating people the way Ohio State's beating people. And I, if Penn State keeps it close, then I think that's got to be a better win. Um, and they A better factor, loss, right? A better loss, sorry. Then they won't factor in the Tua injury quite as much and you you may be right but i i think that these are still humans that will look at, at tua as a spectacle because they they kind of did it with kyler murray last year right and, and it was a little bit different because oklahoma and texas uh no oklahoma and uh in ohio state like kind of looked like the same team and but yeah you had, but it you was had, really really easy to not want to put ohio state in with all the urban meyer stuff like they, Agreed. one team was a very likable team. If you're talking about, hey, we got to pick between these two, one team is a very likable team, and the other team was made up of a group of assholes that nobody wanted to put in or see in. I, I can, I can understand where you're coming from, but both teams did have like super close losses. They didn't dominate games. Uh, Oklahoma nearly got beat by West Virginia. They nearly got beat by. Uh, well, they did get beat by Texas in the regular season. I would say they did get but they, beat by Texas. They, they nearly got beat by Oklahoma State at home, like and not a good Oklahoma State team, like a 6-6 six and six Oklahoma State. So, you know, it, you, you could have kept Oklahoma out for that. Uh, yeah. Ohio State, of course, had the, the massive loss. Uh, you know, in this situation, 
I think they give it to the team with, you know, the the highlight player, the guy that's going to cool. win awards, that kind of stuff. Maybe. And, and I know that that's the, ridiculous. The other thing, Lincoln Riley, you can't really compare last year. Lincoln Riley was the bell of the ball uh, last year in football. He could do no wrong. Literally, I don't know, 125 schools in college football would fire their head coach right now to hire Lincoln Riley. And then, I don't know, 28 of the of the 32 NFL teams would fire their head coach to hire Lincoln Riley at yeah. that point in time. He, he was just the guy. If you wanted to showcase somebody, I don't know that it was Kyler Murray that would want to showcase. I think it was Lincoln. Hey, you might be right. You might be right. So and Now, we don't have that this year. We're not going to have – you won't be trying to showcase James Franklin or Nick Saban, all right? They've yeah. both been around college football for a long time. Both of them are likable in their own ways, but also really get under people's skin in their own ways. This is not a – we need to see Lincoln Riley on a big stage in his own form um, situation. No, you're you're right about that. You're right about that. All right, we went a little long. We thought this was going to yeah. be quicker, but uh, but that's what happens when you and I sit and talk college football. So <laughs> it happens. All right, of course you can go find more information about us over at WinningCuresEverything.com. Everything over there, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, hit subscribe on YouTube. Leave us some comments. Tell us what your final four picks would be. We want to know what you guys think. So tell us uh, in the comments below on YouTube. Tell us on Facebook, of course. Uh, if you're on Facebook, hit that like button. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. We appreciate you guys being here. Of course, the show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Go find more information about all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Chris, that's going to wrap it up. So we will uh, we'll see you guys again here in a couple of days. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.